Hi everyone! This is the tutorial video that goes along with my crisscross headband, which is a free pattern available on Ravelry. So I will take you through all the steps start to finish on how to knit this. Uh, follow along with the instructions in the pattern and the videos are here to just help give a visual beyond what photographs can really do for us. So I have my chain here with some waist yarn, just using a crochet hook and just chained, uh, I did 35. I just like to do a couple extra um, since we're casting on 30 stitches. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is uh, cast on using this crochet chain. So I'm gonna go in this back loop here. And just pull the yarn through. So on the chain, there's this nice uh, front to it, and then there are these loops in the back here. So just go through there. So I'm gonna pick up 30 stitches this way. And so what we'll do is we'll knit the band flat and then we'll come back here and we'll unravel this chain when we unravel this chain here uh, these stitches will be live again just on the other side <laughs> and then uh, and then we can kitchener stitch the headband together Now, when you're doing this, you should be careful not to split uh, split the yarn, which I have trouble with. It'll make it more difficult to unravel this chain. You'll have to cut the yarn. Okay, so I have all 30 stitches on my needle. <laughs> and so I'm just going to start knitting. And <clears throat> this headband is garter stitch. So you're just gonna knit each row across. Now, because of the way I've cast this on, my stitches are facing the wrong way. So on this first row, I'm knitting them through the back loop to straighten out my stitches. After this first row, I will knit the stitches as normal. So I'll be facing the correct way. It's just this first row where I gotta go through the back loop. And so we'll just leave this crochet chain here uh, until we go all the way around with the headband and we're wanting to come back and join the two ends together. And that's when we'll uh, rip out this chain and have live stitches again. So I'm just gonna keep knitting back and forth, knitting on every row. This is a great um, easy knit you can do while multitasking if you're watching TV or walking or <laughs> whatever it is you might be multitasking with your knitting. You just want a, a nice easy project. There we go, that's how you start <clears throat> the headband. 
uh, with the provisional cast on and just working in garter stitch. So it's time to put in the crisscross detail on the front of the headband. So I've worked garter stitch back and forth over the 30 stitches for nine inches. So I've got nine inches on here. And uh, now what I'm going to do is bring in my second needle so that I can split uh, these stitches in half. So what we're going to do is work half of the stitches and then the other half of the stitches so there will be a split down the middle and then we will crisscross them <laughs> and then knit across the stitches. So we're basically doing a big cable but we're putting a split down the middle so that the cable sits more flat. So let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to use my second needle and I'm going to knit across half of the stitches. There's 30 total, so I'm going to knit 15 onto this second needle. Okay, so that's halfway. So I'm going to leave the other half on my first needle. I'm just gonna let them rest over there. And I'm going to work these 15 stitches back and forth for a total of 16 rows. So I've worked one right here. I'm gonna turn my work and I'm going to continue. So that's two rows across. So you can see we're going to get a split down the middle. I'm going to work this half in a column, this half in a column, and I need that split down the middle. So work back and forth here a total of 16 rows. Okay, so I finished the 16 rows back and forth here on the one half. So we're going to repeat the same thing over here. So again, there's going to be a split down the middle. So what I need to do is cut this yarn, cut our working yarn, and we're gonna rejoin it over here, okay? But we're gonna rejoin it so we continue the garter stitch pattern, okay? So you can see on this side, I have knit stitches. That was the last row I worked. It was going this way. <laughs> so when I rejoin, I need to go back, okay? Okay, so I'm going to cut my working yarn and we'll weave in this end later. So give yourself, you know, a good six inches or so to weave in later. And we're going to attach our working yarn over here onto the first needle. So again, we need to keep the garter stitch pattern. So since I ended going this way, I need to reattach here in the middle and work back, okay? So I'm going to turn this around. You can see I have the pearl bumps facing me. 
which is what we need for the garter stitch. I'm just going to start working from the middle back out across these 15 stitches. And so that is one row across. So again, this end will weave in later. Okay, so just leave it for now. So that's one row, just like we did one row across here and then a second row back. So I'm gonna keep doing that here. Okay, so for a total of 16 rows, the same number we did over here. Now we're gonna leave these stitches live on the second needle. Um, so when we finish these 16 rows, we'll have the two halves still with live stitches. So I'm going to work 15 more rows because I just did one of them. And then we'll come back. Okay, so I have my two separate columns here. Uh, 16 rows each. You can see that... Both of these ended on the same side, right? which is a good sign. <laughs> they started coming from the same direction and ended on the same direction. So um, now it's time for the crisscross. So all we're gonna do, we're gonna leave this working yarn attached, but we're just going to crisscross these two columns and knit across to rejoin them, okay? So, I'm going to turn this, turn my work. I've got my working yarn here in the middle. But what I'm going to do is crisscross these two. So it doesn't matter, this is completely reversible, which is fun. Uh, you can cross it in front. You can cross it behind. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna cross in front. All right, so here's the working yarn. So. We want to work this straight across here. So I'm going to work across this column. It's going to be hard to hold this in front. So I'm just going to leave them separate like this. I'm going to work back across here with my working yarn. We're going to be putting all the stitches back on one needle again. Okay, so I'm going to continue working with this needle. So I will crisscross this in front. Okay, so where this end is, where you left off, that's where you want to start knitting. And you can see we're going to continue the garter stitch pattern. So I have the purl bumps facing me, and then I'm going to be knitting across here. Okay. I'm just going to bring this over and the stitches to the end here and with my working yarn I'm going to knit across. It's going to be pretty awkward for the first few rows but that's normal. Just go with it. <laughs> And now I can set my second needle aside because I don't need it right now. So all the stitches are back on one needle together, working 30 stitches across. Okay, And we've got the crisscross. Now again, it looks really awkward right now. So as we continue knitting in garter stitch, uh, this will uh, look more 
like the crisscross. We just don't see the other side right now. Okay, so there is, because there was a slit in the middle, there is going to be a hole in here. That's, that's part of the pattern. Okay, that's completely normal. So we're just going to continue working in garter stitch. Okay, knitting across each row for the remainder of the headband. So just keep knitting back and forth, back and forth, okay, for the remainder of the headband. All right, so I have the headband totally finished <laughs> as far as the knitting is concerned. So if I measure this, uh, so I have it laid flat on the table. So if I measure this, right, we're at about 18 and a half inches. So my head is about 22 inches in circumference. So this gives a little bit of negative ease. And since it is garter stitch, it is stretchy. So it's gonna fit very nicely on my head, right? There's, there's some give here in the crisscross. <laughs> Uh, so I'm ready to take out the provisional cast on with my waist yarn here so that I can join the two ends together. Just like with knitting, uh, with crochet, you want to take this out uh, the opposite direction that you created it, right? So if you rip out your knitting from where you left off, it's the easiest. Uh, if, if you try to unravel it the opposite direction, it's more difficult. Same with crochet. So this is the end I left off with. So I'm going to take out the crochet chain, which is going to leave live stitches. So I have my second needle here. I'm gonna put the live stitches on here. And I mentioned I was having trouble with the strands of the waist yarn and I did not get this one fully through here. So I'm just going to clip that ply. I can keep unraveling the waist yarn to get my stitches.
Okay, so the waist yarn is gone. I have live stitches here. I also have live stitches on the other end attached to my ball of yarn still. So all we have to do is Kitchener stitch the two ends together. But we need to make sure we do this on the correct side. <laughs> so when you create the Kitchener stitch, it will form uh, a row of knit stitches which if your fabric is all stock and knit stitch, you know which side should be uh, facing. But since we have garter stitch, where it's uh, purl row, knit row, purl row, uh, we need to make sure we're putting a knit row in between two purls. So I need two purl sides to be facing. So I need to flip this this way. So that here, uh, I have pearl bumps, and also on the other side, I have pearl bumps, okay? Now, if where you've ended, you don't get that, <laughs> then just knit across one more row, right? So that you can have two pearl bumps here. And so when we do the Kitchener stitch in between, it's creating a knit row in between them. So it'll just look like garter stitch all the way across here. You won't even notice the seam. Now make sure also that <laughs> you have these together to actually form a headband. So there should only be a crisscross where we did the crisscross, right? And then everything else should come together flat. All right. So all I'm going to do now is, well, my ball yarn is going through my headband. Hang on. I'm going to uh, cut the working yarn from the ball, giving myself enough length to do Kitchener stitch across my 30 stitches. So I always err on the side of more length rather than less. So I'm giving myself I don't know, foot and a half, two feet, probably a bit excessive, we'll see. <laughs> and so then I need my yarn needle. So I'm going to thread this. And we're going to work the Kitchener stitch. So I scoot the stitches on both needles here toward the end here with my working yarn. Again, I've got pearl bumps here and pearl bumps here. So when I'm working my Kitchener stitch, it's creating a knit row in between them. So, uh, the yarn is on my side. We usually have it starting in the back, uh, but what I'm going to do is then just start over here. So, going in pearl-wise in the back, knit-wise into the stitch next to it, knit-wise on the front needle, wise next to it right? and we just keep doing that so purl wise slip that stitch off knit wise next to it knit wise in the front slip that stitch off purl wise next to it and you just keep going so one stitch at a time is getting slipped off. Front and back needles. Okay. 
And you'll be able to start to see that knit row forming in between them. So I'm just going to continue across in Kitchener Stitch until I get to the end. Almost to the end. I am trying to match my gauge here a bit. So the tension of my Kitchener Stitch I like to blend in, uh, so trying to keep that gauge the same. So keep in mind when you're doing Kitchener Stitch, when you're changing from needle to needle, you do want the yarn to go under, this loop goes under both the, the needle. You don't want it to catch over the needle. Now I'm moving from the back to the front and I want to make sure the yarn stays under the needle. It doesn't create a new stitch over top. I just think in my head, pearl, knit, knit, pearl. And that's just telling me which direction to put the yarn needle in each stitch. These original cast on stitches are much tighter on the needle than my last row worked. See, that yarn's going over this needle. It needs to go under. <laughs> I don't want to create a new stitch. Okay, so I have three stitches on the back and three stitches on the front. You should be seeing that uh, those stitch counts are the same. So now I have two on the front and two on the back. So at this point, I'm going to go in pearlwise and I can slip that off the needle and then knitwise. Move to the front, knitwise, slide that off the needle, pearlwise, and then We'll just go back through these again one more time. Pearlwise, just under the needle, knitwise. And instead of trying to fight to get that last one off, but keep the first stitch on the needle, I'm, now that I've gone through both of them, I'll slide them both off the needles. And so now all I have to do is weave in all my ends. So you can see that the Kitchener stitch along here just blends in with the garter stitch, right? It just looks like a knit row in between these pearl bumps. <laughs> and so on the back of the headband, you won't even be able to tell where that is located, which is pretty slick. So yeah, like I said, all I have to do is weave in my ends uh, and you can see, yeah, I went a bit excessive here. <laughs> I didn't need two feet of yarn, but that's what usually happens to me. So I'm just going to weave in this last end, my cast on, 
as well as the two ends here in the middle. I'm doing the crisscross, so I'll just weave these in here. And like I said, this is completely reversible. So if you think about that, so the crisscross looks the same on the other side, so does the Kitchener stitch, right? Um, so think about that as you're weaving your ends in. If you want it to remain reversible, um, just try to hide them. Right. But that's the crisscross headband.